Greetings, Douglas County. This is Commissioner Kelly Robinson of the 2nd District. Welcome to District Dialogue. And we've got a very special edition this time. We've got a couple of special guests I'm going to introduce here in a minute. We're going to talk about legislation. Um, some of the things that happened in this um, past General Assembly, we're going to get into the details. I'm going to introduce my guests when we come back, but stay tuned for District Dialogue. Welcome back, Douglas County. Again, Commissioner Kelly Robinson of the 2nd District. I'm here with a couple of special guests here, and let me introduce them to you. I have Senator Donzella James of the 35th District. Hello. <laughs> Say greetings. Hello, hello. I have State Representative Kimberly Alexander of the 67th. Glad to be here. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. So, again, um, you guys have been on this show before, and this is just going to be a conversation. Um, there's a couple of things that are important to Douglas County that you guys covered in the General Assembly. Um, but let, let's talk about some things that are local. All right, let's, let's just get into um, maybe something that's probably more taboo than anything. Let's talk about mental health. Um, it's called a, a few things. Yep. Um, and so um, I know uh, State Rep, you and I have been working together mm -hmm. along with Judge Bo McLean. And this is, let's just say we're just continuing the conversation. Right. From the so last been time. On that for three <laughs> years. So tell me what happened down at the General Assembly regarding mental, mental health, mental illness, and how you'd like to frame it. Okay. So everybody know I was here probably about a couple of years ago and did a study committee, and it generated from out of Douglas County uh, on mental illness. Uh, within that study committee came out about nine recommendations. The governor took the first recommendation, which was to put together um, an entity that covers the children of uh, mental illness because right now we only have adult mental illness that's covered. So he uh, put together a commission on children's mental health. There are some great things that came out of that. Um, but first I want to I want to say as far as me representing Douglas County, there were two bills that I filed on mental illness this year. I filed um, one bill that was a pre-file, it was HB 659, and that was a medical technician or paramedic to observe an involuntary conduct evaluation and treatment for mental illness or alcohol or drug abuse. I know that that was being pushed also from the Senate side from, uh, from Dr. Rett. There's another bill that I filed, which was HB 733, and what this bill would do is add more psychiatrists to the rural areas um, in the state of Georgia. Um, in the 159 counties, there's only half of those counties that have psychiatrists. The Department of Health Policy and Management Rollins School of Public Health of Emory reports there are 10.9 psychiatrists per 100,000 people in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. What happened with that bill, I'm happy to say, is that I had to meet with so many people th uh, throughout the session. <clears throat> At the end of the day, the community workforce development, I met with them twice. They met at their board meeting in January and agreed to add psychiatrists mm -hmm. to the list of the doctors that will be benefit from the fellowship loan program. Mm -hmm. That, as a result, $1.9 million has been added to that line item where it says uh, community workforce development, and that 1.9 million includes the psychiatrists in the state of Georgia. So they get added right into it. All get right. so added you, you right into it. So it wasn't just sort of a symbolic. Oh movement. my gosh, it was a lot of communication with appropriations. Very good. Yeah. And, and, and so when, when you talk about um, funding, um, and you talk about children's mental health in this past um, uh, budgeting process for Douglas County. Uh, we were able to secure and appropriate $125,000 for a grant for Judge Peggy Walker uh, to begin the process. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, we, we want to be in place so that we have our match and we can leverage to you at the state or even at the federal level um, to make a difference. Yes. And we're just getting started um, in the children's area, so we look forward to what's coming out of that. So yeah. thank you for sharing that on, on mental illness. Now, as you know, by the time this show airs, it'll be May, and um, this is uh, the week before and one of the things that we, we talk about in May is we declare it Mental Illness Month. Yes. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on out there in society. I'm just, I, I'm going to frame this last part, which is, uh, is mental illness an issue that we're really ready to tackle? 
I mean, we see it popping up, Mad Rep, but I mean, is it something, it looks like we're trying to do it at the local levels, but right. it, it, what's missing at the table to really make this thing come together? Well, I have some budget highlights because I, I think that will let you know what the state of Georgia, what they're doing as it relates to the children's mental yes. health. There are 6.0 million for new behavior health crisis center beds with priority given to the areas of the greatest needs. Okay. Now, this, some of this that I'm going to tell you is coming out of that commission for the children's mental illness. 2.2 million for a forensic unit at Grady Hospital. 5.9 million for crisis services for child and adolescents served by DBHDD who have autism. 5.7 million for the ADA settlement, which is the housing. And 4 million to create a substance abuse and recovery block grant program. 10.32 million for crisis services for children and youth. 4.2 million for the Georgia Apex program for an additional 13 grants for evidence-based service delivery through community service boards. And we've talked about the community service boards and local partners. 1.1 million for child and youth suicide prevention. 611,000 for high fidelity wrap-up services training. And this next one is a really, really good one. 1.553 million to plan and implement supported employment and education assistance for an additional 500 young adults at the rate of 6,120 per year, effective January 1st, 2019. So there's some great things and the budget definitely includes a lot as it relates to the children's mental health. And moving it forward. So again, we're beginning to reach out into other areas. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I'm, 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 I'm hearing we're moving there, we're putting money, um, but is the public aware? How, how, you know, and I'll, I'll, we'll close this before we shift to our next topic, which is, uh, again, awareness is important. Yes. Um, as much as we, um, as uh, legislators mm -hmm. at local, state, and federal levels, mm -hmm. uh, we advocate for things and get things, you know, appropriated, if the public can't access it, then sometimes that money just sits there and it gets redirected for whatever yes. reason. It gets, if it's under the executive, y'all know how it works, unless there's some type of condition, yes. it shifts. So what's being done to make sure that the public is aware because there's an assumption that they know. Yes. And so I- So there's a, there's a event that will be going on. I don't have the information with me, but I will be participating in it in May. Um, somebody reached out to me, so it would be here in Douglas County and that will also bring more awareness to mental illness. I would also say what you guys are doing. We have to continue that. So even though I know what I know from the budgetary as it relates to mental illness, we still have to continue to make sure that we're keeping the public aware. Um, there's so many incidents that occur and uh, these individuals are walking among us and we just need to know. And it's a, it becomes a public safety issue. Right. It, it, it is a, it, it's a, it's a, it's a societal issue. It is. It's in our neighborhood, it's in our homes, yes. in our backyards, in our okay. schools, it's in our churches. It, it, it's around all amongst us. So I, I, I thank you, State Rep, for that. So now I'm gonna, we're gonna shift gears here and get into another topic here. Oh. There's probably, as a good segue, is uh, to talk about something that's um, um, a topic of, of conversation here in Douglas County, which is transportation. And uh, one of the things that we've been working on here at the local level, and I'm gonna lean on State, uh, State uh, Senator Donzella James to help fill in the gaps for Greta and some of the things that came in a, a local, legis uh, local legis or state legislation that impacts us locally is the county has continued to move forward on transportation. Um, we um, were pursuing an ARC grant. We're in the final stages of getting that secured. Hopefully in the next, probably, um, sometime late May, by the time you hear this, probably June, um, is something that perhaps we're anticipating will be awarded um, to the county. Uh, the next step after that is the county has to accept that award. Uh, that probably won't be before us until July, uh, after the fiscal year of the state kicks in. Um, and then sometime after that, we'll have a couple of public hearings regarding um, ratifying um, the roads themselves. Um, these are formal process steps. One of the, and the reason I share that is that it, it's all about a process. You've got to take your time. You can't get ahead. The process that we've gone through so far is almost like pre-qualifying for a house. We need to make sure we got the money. We can't commit too many resources. We can't get too far ahead. Uh, we are doing some education. Uh, we did, uh, we 
um, a, a secured relationship with collaborative firm. Um, they did some work over in Atlanta, the metro area yes. with Clayton and South Fulton and, and so forth regarding transportation. And this is something that we thought was important to educate the public. Mm. But we didn't just educate them on sort of what we call this fifth wheel of what we're planning to do. There's four services that we already offer. We're the second largest user of van pools in the state, mm. Douglas County itself, mm -hmm. right? right? So you got van pools, you got car pools, we got Greta already operating here. And, and so it's one of those where we want to make sure that we educate people on what we currently have. Mm. Right? So those four basic functions, and then we'll get into sort of the fifth route, which is consideration of this fixed route system. So we, we anticipate that you know, it's not just about the transportation loan, it's about economic development, it's about equity, it's about giving people access. Yes. And it's something that we know that is important. Um, we did a, a very good market study back in 2015 that identified certain segments that mm -hmm. need to be met. Uh, the disabled, the millennials, the seniors, part-time workers, um, as well as um, no or one-car families, right? But it's not just about those that perhaps are, are perceived as lack. Uh, I had a town hall just recently, uh, right there in the villas at West Ridge and um, right off of Lee Road um, in Lithia Springs. And I um, had a couple of gentlemen there who were, were talking to us. We were sitting there talking. One was a civil rights attorney. He said, Commissioner Robinson, I currently use Greta right now. And so it's, it's not about a, a class system. Mm. I mean, some people, I mean, it was, if you think about it, uh, I was just looking at all, I did the birthday, um, for Madam Chair, I did the birthday uh, party over at the Senior Center, right? These are all our senior citizens, and we go around and ask them their age. And if you notice out of a room about 40 people, nobody was here from here but except for one person. Really? And a lot of people moved in from out, yes. of, out, of, out of other places. Mm. So they have a perspective that I, I think you have to acknowledge and honor that everybody doesn't necessarily have um, apprehension for using public transportation, mm. especially when you're sort of the more uh, northern, more advanced um, cities. Uh, they already have them built in from mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. to Cleveland to New York. And, and some people may be like, well, I wouldn't do that. We understand it's just an option. But we recognize that Douglas County is part of the, the 10 core counties or 13 core counties 13. and the 20 bigger metro counties, mm -hmm. but we know that we're one of the basics, right? We, we, we finally have grown up and we're finally in that place and people talk about our budget, right? And it's like, well, Douglas County's not broke. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen to that. Mm -hmm. our, our financials are very solid. Uh, we, we're very clear. You know, they're always asking the question, well, how much does this cost? Well, we, we applied for a grant for roughly $8 million. And that was originally for just the two original routes. Mm -hmm. you know, third route was Riverside. Yes. It, it was, the third route was always there. <laughs> um, but, um, but what happened was, um, during the process, is that ARC had said well, it was insufficient. So as an educator, it's like, okay, y'all need to do this over. So we had to go mm -hmm. and get some, get some technical assistance, as it's called. Right. Got a consultant coming here and said, okay, let's rewrite this. Um, uh, they rewrote and says, well, you got two routes. That's not big enough to warrant this grant. Okay, well, you got this third route. Why isn't that online? Because Riverside and Thornton is where all your major jobs are. Yes. Why, why are you isolating that? Mm -hmm. You got people rolling around the mall, and then you've got to connect the other two routes to that to even make it sense. Thus is why we evolve where we are. So it's one of those where we had to evolve through this. Again, our staff is not in the public transportation, so we give mm -hmm. them sufficient support. But we recognize that with this grant, um, when they finally came back preliminary, they said we would get um, $6 million, right? And that's over three years. Mm -hmm. And that's seed money. Mm -hmm. right? We had to put our match up, which we've always mm -hmm. done through our capital mm -hmm. trans, we, we, we've covered that. But, but one of those where it was always the question is what do we do afterwards? Yes. Well, in our minds, the economic would rise mm -hmm. and it would care for it. So we were not necessarily concerned with that. We know that it, eh, it probably wasn't going to be more than $2 million a year. Yeah. But we were very clear to say, well, it's going to be a trade-off. It's, it's a set of priorities. Mm -hmm. We're not going to spend another $100 million on a jail right. that made 800, 800 people comfortable. I, I drive that home. Like, no, I mean, okay, so let's re re recalibrate how we spend money. Mm -hmm. And that's just my opinion, my, my one vote. That being said, what we've tried to do also is recognize that there does need to be an offset of long-term funding. Yes. Thus, Greta comes along. Ooh. So, like, I'd like to do now is sort of segue <laughs> into what, what we see as Greta um, and what came down with um, the General Assembly is that it gives us a long-term funding option. Yes. Right? So we've, let's just say we've got the next three years. Um, that we'll go out and pilot this. It'll be in play by the end of this year, you know, pilot, and we'll just move through this. At some point, um, you know, you guys give us an opportunity, and thank you so much for that, because you've empowered us. Mm -hmm. You gave the local legend, you, you gave the local bodies like, okay, so y'all, local. 
Y'all make the choice. You gave us funding mechanism. You gave us referendum power. You gave us authority. You gave everything. us everything we need to do <laughs> to do what we need to do for our own future. And I was like, that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. It was brilliant. Um, so, um, State Senator, um, please, would you weigh in and tell us a little bit, what are some highlights of the Greta Bill? That, and, and I want to ask you a couple of questions after that. Go ahead. Well, you know, uh, they have spent several years in uh, talking about uh, making a regional transportation or or doing something with our transportation system. Mm -hmm. So they did uh, have an overhaul of all our transportation systems. And they wanted to uh, combine the Cobb uh, Link, Gwinnett County Transit, our MARTA, the uh, Georgia Regional Transportation Authority, which is Greta, and all others. They wanted to combine all of them. Right. So they passed this bill House Bill 930, and then we passed one in the Senate, and then they combined them. And they had, they had a uh, committed to come together and try to put both of them together. And that's, that's what we did uh, those last uh, few days, few weeks of the session. Right. And so this was one of the highlights of the whole uh, 2018 mm -hmm. session. Right. So, uh, they're going to change the name uh, of, of uh, MARTA, mm -hmm. and all of those are going to come under one umbrella called the ATL. And the ATL, uh, Douglas County uh, now is, as you said, is currently serviced by Greta, and that means that they'll be eligible to become part of this ATL. Mm -hmm. And under ATL, uh, Everybody, they're going to have 10 uh, different, um, the lieutenant governor and the governor and the speaker of the house are going to appoint people. So it's going to be 10 appointed from the authority districts, which mm -hmm. is part of, of Douglas County. And then it's going to be two appointed by the lieutenant governor, two by the speaker, one by the governor, and then they're going to all come together under this commission of transportation. So they're going to redo Greta, and then everybody uh, uh, will be under the regional transportation plan. Everybody will be able to ask, access uh, money for different projects. So they'll have an opportunity to, to put in for projects, but uh, then they, the whole committee has to approve whether or not they will get that or not. And Douglas County can just enter into this, they don't have to, but they can enter into this intergovernmental agreement, which uh, would include an agreed upon list of trans transit projects and agreement identifying the operation of these projects. And it has to be estimated account, uh, amounts attached to it. So the best thing that Douglas County needs to do now that this has passed is to make sure that uh, out of the 13 counties when they're picking 10, 10 uh, people to be on that committee that we have a real strong voice. One of those 10 need to be from Douglas County and need to be representing Douglas County. And uh, the, the county would uh, have to notify its uh, election superintendent of their intent to call for a splash referendum. Let, let, me, let me ask a question for that. So, so to your point, if we, so you're saying we got to put it on the ballot. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, for a T-splash. For, for tea T-splash. And so w one of the questions I had to ask, uh, which was, um, as you know, Douglas County just issued a splash in 2016. Right. right. We're just now in our first full year. And I wanted to make sure that there was no implications if we went with another t another spot, like, okay, you're not going to mess up my credit score that by having us too leveraged. Mm -hmm. uh, we were asking our municipal and they did come back and said we should be able to run these concurrently. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, but, but it's, it's one of those questions. But, but still, it's, yeah, it's, it's you're that. Right. that it, but, but, but to that point, I, I, I think we, we want to make sure that we don't overdo it, right? Because Douglas Correct. County, though, we're not as big as our, our, the big five, as I say. We, we, we're good but we don't want to grow and, and do too much. So here's the question, out of that penny spost, am I required to take all of it or can I take a fraction of it? Because there's one of those like, if, I don't, if my system doesn't require a penny, can I take half a penny or a quarter of a penny? 
You know, uh, that I would have to read the bill and find out if you could uh, specify how much mm -hmm. you want to put into it, but uh, it is it it just requires uh, that you have the intent to have a tea splash. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so you're required to have the intent. Yes, that's good. It doesn't say when, where, how much, okay. but I'm sure that uh, that committee, that ATL committee, is going to make those kind of decisions. And, and the reason I ask, Senator, is that one of the things is we want to try to <coughs> customize um, um, the power that you gave us to fit our world, our, our current exactly. situation. In other words, I still believe there's the best of both worlds. As you know, mm -hmm. we're urban, suburban, rural <laughs> city. Yeah, all and, of the above. And it, 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 it's a tale of two cities, but I always believe that we can all coexist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So those areas that want to remain um, less dense, let them be. But for those mm -hmm. who are closer to the sun, in essence, um, it's going to be a little okay. bit more denser. And, I, and we're, so we're, I'm, I'm hopeful as we work through this legislation and really get a better understanding with it, we understand what that means for us because mm -hmm. the public will ask for us to they sort of are. like, you know, and I'm already being asked, are we going to put mm -hmm. on this year's ballot? And I'm like, well, I don't know if we're going to do it, but I don't think I'm going to bring that out of committee as a recommendation because we're not ready yet to have that conversation. But we're going to use our pilot program to prove ourselves. So when we go to the public in a referendum, we have some facts. Yeah. But they, again, they just said, to, you, you have to, in order to get on this committee and be a part of it, yeah. you have to have the intent. It didn't say that you had to have it this year. Yeah, understood. And then even if you voted it down, you had the intent to do it. Right. Can, and, can I, can I, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, oh, were you finished? Go ahead. No, I wasn't, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanted to say, so for, from my standpoint, I will be attending a uh, transportation meeting with the author of the bill on next Tuesday, May 1st. It's from 11.30 to 1.30, and they're going to give some more insight. And um, the sponsor is the Metro Atlanta Chamber. Mm -hmm. So they've asked that, you know, some of oh. us, yeah, come to it. So I will definitely be there so I can get more information, so I can be informative, so I can come back and tell the citizens. And, and, and to that point, and, and we appreciate this. Again, we, we know it's complex. Uh, mm -hmm. But from what I've read, I've read it a couple of times, it's very thoughtful. I mean, you've covered mm -hmm. everything. I mean, it's just a matter of us getting in our spirit and what does that really mean for us and being able to explain it to the public. But I, I want to bring both of you to this point um, about answering the question is that does it require that, does it mean that we're going to bring a train out here tomorrow? And, and, it, and, it, and the reason I bring that up, because um, there was always some, some here in Douglas, there was con some concerns about MARTA. You know, don't, you know, don't bring that over here. Right? Mm -hmm. But yet here we have evolved, and it's part of the solution for our yes. future. Um, I remember back in 2015, both of you um, gave me the privilege of, of joining you to meet Marta mm -hmm. for the very first time. We went to their headquarters. Yes. Back in 15, this is right when this study was breaking. We yes. wanted to really get into that. I wanted to, let's go look at the top of the food chain, look at how their system mm -hmm. works. All right, remember, that, remember that? We all went over there mm -hmm. and we, we had a little on. Yep. And so it was one of those where that was the beginning of let's get our understanding, right? But here we are three years later and it's come full circle. And you know, uh, MARTA is a very important component to uh, the operation of the economic engine of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yes. You gotta move people. It ain't just about moving cargo and all of these other things. Mm -hmm. People have to move. Right? It's about quality of life. It's about getting, you know, the whole, everybody rises with, with economic development. Yes. And so that transportation, I mean, the, the system itself is just a vehicle. It's optional. You don't have to participate in it. But at a minimum, we need buses. We do a good job of moving people outside the county, but we got all these great jobs. We got $3.3 billion last mm -hmm. year in economic mm -hmm. development. When that hits in a couple of years, at all this time, how people get these jobs? And then we want, you know, we're, we as elected officials locally are held accountable. Why are y'all letting all these people, well, the, the mm -hmm. company's like, well, your people can't get to the jobs. Right. Like, well, I mean, we're willing to help subsidize, you know what I'm saying. So let me, now I want to make sure we, we, we now I appreciate that. We want to get more into that. But I, I want to also hit some of the highlights of your own individual bills, if that's okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick pause here and we're going to come right back on District Dialogue. My name is Kelly Robinson. I'll be right back. Welcome back, Douglas County. This is Commissioner Kelly Robinson of the 2nd District. This is District Dialogue, May of 2018. 
Senator James, you've got anything else you want to add about mental illness, mental health in general? Yes, thank you. Uh, from the Senate side, we've, we've done quite a bit too, and we supported the initiatives that have already been discussed by my colleague, uh, Kimberly Alexander. And, you know, she's been leading us on the uh, Douglas delegation on mental health. But over the years, that's been a very important issue to me right. in that uh, when I first started in the legislature, uh, my, one of my younger sisters was a student at Georgia State and had a nervous breakdown and she never came back to herself. Mm. We found out that, that uh, she just didn't come home and we thought she was kidnapped, we didn't know what happened. When we found out, she had had a nervous breakdown down at the school and somehow got sent to this uh, mental health place mm -hmm. and they gave her shock treatments. Can you believe that they still mm -hmm. give shock treatments? She had never even, uh, you know, taken any, anything stronger than Coca-Cola in her whole body. You know, never had been sick to take medicine. So when that hit her, her brain, she just kind of went off the deep end, mm -hmm. and all these years later, she's not back. So I've been interested, and right. in, in, uh, every time I see people sleeping under the bridge or filling up the, the jails, mm -hmm. and I know that they're not really criminals, but they're just mentally ill, mm -hmm. it caused me to want to support all the legislation that we've had over the years. Right. But the biggest problem was autism, and that's what I, mm -hmm. uh, I have been concentrating on. Uh, when I got into the Senate and I was put on a, uh, I was asked to be a chairman of the Interstate Corporation Committee, some of the people wanted autism to be something that we would discuss because it's something from state to state mm -hmm. that is happening. And our Lieutenant Governor is, is pro uh, education of all people, including those who have special needs or mental illnesses. So he uh, also went out front. And so uh, I was supporting all his, he saw that I wanted to get more money into it. I said, we don't di diagnose these children mm -hmm. enough. So he spearheaded the uh, bill to uh, make sure that our children by between the ages, up until the age of six can be, um, have a, the tested testings for autism, and, you, and, mm -hmm. and Douglas County has one of the best programs for special education of those with autism in, in our whole metropolitan area, really probably in the whole state. So uh, I thank the Lieutenant Governor. I am so glad I got a chance to work with all of them, but we're continuing to six years old. They should have made it until 18 years old, until they get out of out of high school. So now we have the push this year, we push to make it to 13. And uh, Senator, uh, the, the Senator who is over Health and Human Services, son actually had a little something going on uh, and then he ended up committing suicide when he was a senior. And that was Senator Utterman, of course. And she's the chairman of our, our um, uh, Health and Human Services Committee in the Senate. So she had a lot of influence in pushing that. So we have gotten it to 13. Now we still, the saga continues. Right. We okay. still have so, so much, much work, work to do, work to do. do. Right. with our mental illness. Thank well, you. good. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's good. And, and, and again, as we, we, we think about these topics, and again, you guys have done some great work at the General Assembly. I thought this was actually pretty solid. I know it's a mm -hmm. Uh, I know it's always an election year, but I, I knew this was an election year. But it seems like there was some, again, some rich things that got accomplished, mm -hmm. even if it was set up for the next uh, session. State Rep, anything else you would like to share with the citizens of the Douglas County? Um, like, what was working on that you worked around locally? What? So there were seven bills that I um, either sponsored or co-sponsored. Uh, two bills I was sponsored, and then the remaining bills were co-sponsors on two from out of um, motor vehicles. Since that's one of the committees that I that I sit on. The one that generated from out of Douglas County was a bill that was a bipartisan consumer protection bill. And that bill was HB 748. 
And what that bill does is that um, this was something that was brought from the Douglas County elected officials and also the citizens. So this bill protects new HOA in condominium communities from builders who do not complete or maintain amenities and other facilities prior to the com community being turned over to the community association. We know that with those community associations, there's a lot of issues that you know, come along and inside mm. these subdivisions. So that's, we were getting this input from so many citizens and we put forth a bipartisan bill from, um, and out of the House, it, it did pass, but I, once it got to the Senate and everybody knows that even though it passes out of the House, it still has to pass, pass out of the Senate. You, so that was one of the bills. Another bill that- Before um, you leave that one though, I wanna- H Okay. Uh, yeah, the, 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 um, one of the communities in, in my district, Palmer Falls, mm -hmm. was sort of the, 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 the sort of a, a hallmark of that, where you had this, this community that was developed. I went through bankruptcy because of the recession. It mm -hmm. comes out on the other side. It's incomplete. All of that. These people, but they were still buying into. You got new people coming into a community, but they're still selling swimming pools yes. and all of this. And mm -hmm. they're like, wait a minute, we get in here and there's nothing behind it. And that's the bait and switch. And that was the things that I, when I reached out to you guys, said, look, mm -hmm. how can we fix this now? We, ch we changed the local ordinance for that. So that became the foundation. It's like, you can't do that coming in here no more. You've right. got to build it on the front side and show some type of progress. But I'm glad to hear that you guys took that up at the state mm -hmm. because that, that's a bad thing to listen to my citizens yep. and, and, and how they were hurt. Yes. They bought into this, this, this promise, this dream, and it was, it was mm -hmm. never true. Yep. And they look at us it's like, well, y'all supposed to be regulators. Y'all supposed to be governing these guys. And yes. so, again, thank you. There, there is another bill that came out, though, as it relates to these homeowner associations um, w related to the cost, the closing costs, okay. because in some cases, um, the um, individual buying the home is being charged all of these fees. There is a cap put on there. Yep. So that is another bill that came out. But then I just wanted to wrap up just to go back to the mental illness. There is another study committee that came out, and that was H.R. 913. And what that do, what that that study committee will do, and that came out this year, is that is is a study committee on incorporating law enforcement in the pathway to treatment and social services for persons having challenges with drug use mm -hmm. and mental illness. So that's another study committee that will be going on this year. Very good, Senator James. I'll give you the final call. Anything else you'd like to share with citizens of Douglas County? What you did in the general assembly this year? Oh, so much, too much to talk yeah, about yeah, here. Yeah, we, we got one we can but, highlight. But but um, yeah. Well, you know, I I want to I want to first mention though that I have a study committee mm -hmm. uh, that uh, did pass, okay. and we will be studying what to do with the film industry, mm -hmm. and mm. what will Georgia continue to to promote. Uh, we've already had tax credits on mm -hmm. film, on gaming, mm -hmm. on music, on so many things. Is this helping? So we'll get a chance to look at that. Yes. But the biggest thing is that we want to promote animation and gaming. Okay. And, and uh, so in, we want to have a whole package when these movies come out. So we and so have our we, own Pixar here what, or something? That's I mean, that what we're trying to shoot we, for? We want to have the whole yeah, package. Yeah. So we, we can let uh, uh, New York continue to be the Broadway place, and then uh, Hollywood can still have their reputation for the certain films, but we need to be the one for everything. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing. But then, uh, of course, uh, the QBE, uh, which is the Quality Basic Education Act, mm. uh, did pass uh, way back before any of us decided to run for office, or maybe wasn't even born, maybe you weren't even born, mm -hmm. but it was in 1985. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be the cure-all mm -hmm. for education in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And my, uh, my parents were uh, principals in Atlanta Public Schools. I taught for a while in Atlanta Public Schools, and I knew that we had some serious problems in, in, uh, in, in our school system. So I said, oh, finally, they're gonna do something to help the children and help educate all children. Mm. But they only cherry picked certain portions of that bill to fund. Mm. They would put the money here or here, their favorite places, but not in all the places that were needed. Mm. So uh, uh, Senator uh, Governor Deal's uh, wife was a teacher 
and he said that she's been telling him the whole time that he's been governor, what about QBE? Mm -hmm. And he said, in honor of all the teachers and retirees, he looked at that and felt that he wanted his legacy to be to fully fund the Quality Basic Education Act to see if it really is going to be the best thing since apple pie that they thought it would be when they first passed it. Now, whether it will be as great, I don't know, because now we have charter schools and so many other things right. is going on. Right. However, yeah. I, the teachers and the uh, retiree uh, association from educators all are applauding it because mm -hmm. they see so many great things that are coming out of it for themselves. So I, uh, being on the education committee, being mm -hmm. a former teacher, you know, I, I wanted to really promote that more than anything else. I want to see that and I want to see us continue to uh, prepare our children for the, a bright future and continue to put money in in the dual enrollment mm -hmm. programs. You know, we can talk about it all day long, but we have some smart kids. Mm -hmm. They get to the ninth and 10th grade and we want to encourage them while they are already continuing to do their schoolwork. Mm -hmm. You can go to college too, free, mm -hmm. if you want to. All you have to do is pass this test. And we have a, a, that going on in, in Douglas County mm -hmm. very well, but we could have we could do even more if they had more money. So we're pushing. We could do it. more if we could do more. Do more. <laughs> Y'all gonna be busy here for a long time. <laughs> well, we hope so. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I want to thank both of you for coming mm -hmm. on the show today, and I also want to give um, um, a respectful acknowledgement to the full um, Douglas delegation. Yes. I, I think that's important um, here. So uh, thank you to all of them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, my name is Kelly Robinson. We had a special edition today to talk about legislation that affected us both at the state and the local level. My name is Kelly Robinson. Again, my special guest is Senator Donzella James and State Rep Kimberly Alexander. Ladies, again, thank you for coming thank on our show. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And with that being said, I'll come back later with my closing comments. Thank you. Welcome back, Douglas County. This is Commissioner Kelly Robinson at the conclusion of District Dialogue. In my closing thoughts, I, I want to come back to the bus system. Um, I know we call it shuttle. Uh, we make other references to it. But at the end of the day, it's about mobility of our neighbors. We have to move forward. Uh, my commitment to you as chairman of the Transportation Committee is to work with all citizens, to take into consideration and include all their thoughts, uh, and come up with a collective view of how we're going to move forward. But we are moving forward. We recognize our process will become more robust. It will require more input from you that is more formalized. Um, thank you for your patience. We had to work through this process. You just can't just lay anything down. We haven't been haphazard. We've been very thoughtful and pragmatic. We're going to make sure we give both sides a balanced input at times where it comes. One of the things I want to highlight over the next couple of months through the month all of May and June is that we'll have consultants that are going to be meeting out in each of the commission districts. And they're going to be gaining input on what they like about our current existing functions as well as propose what we're going to do going forward. So please avail yourselves of those input moments. Again, as always, you can reach out to any committee. You can reach out to any commissioner. You can come to any meeting that is of a public nature please. But we recognize that we thank you all for your patience as we move Douglas County forward. I look forward to anything that you'd like to share with me directly. My name is Kelly Robinson. I'm here on the third floor of the courthouse. Thank you and good evening.